Hi guys, my name's Kieran of the One Zen Academy. Hope this finds you well. Uh, welcome to part one of Awesome Shoulders. And in this part, we're just gonna talk about the anatomy, possibly some of the reasons why we get injured, and part two is basically what we can do about it. Now, let me just give you a, a quick rundown on movements that we have available at the shoulder, and this may give you an indication as to why we get injured in the first place. So we have this flexion, we have this extension, we have an internal and external rotation, we have an abduction and an adduction. Okay, we also at the shoulder girdle or how the scapula works, we can go for a protraction, a retraction, an elevation and depression. Now, unfortunately, there's so many movements that go through the shoulder, it makes it relatively unstable. And then if we appreciate that the humerus or the arm fits into this socket called the glenoid cavity. And there's about a one to four dis uh, disproportion. And what that means is, it's like a golf ball on top of a, a golf tee. You can imagine how unstable that is. So there's a lot of things that happen here that keep it nice and snug. Now unfortunately, if I take my arm into an abduction and external rotation, this is the weakest area of that shoulder. So what happens is the humerus is, is basically coming out of that glenoid cavity. If I then put a load through, like a behind the neck shoulder press or a lap pull down, I'm actually possibly forcing an impingement happening. So we have these things called rotator cuffs, supraspinaeus, infraspinaeus, we have teres minor, and we also have subscapularis. And the two on the outside, uh, infraspinaeus and supraspinaeus, they get forced against the posterior or the rear side of that cavity and possibly worn away. Now, if I force load through that area in the most unstable joint in the body, I have to expect a degree of comeback from that. So I can't then treat my, my shoulder like I treat doing a squat or my hips. This is then connected to the scapula, the shoulder blade, and the scapula has a fantastic relationship with the thoracic spine. And imagine I do a, a lateral raise. When my arms get to here, that's when my shoulder blades themselves, the scapula, start going through abduction. And they should allow that free range. Now at any point that any of those joints get stuck, say for instance, my thoracic spine gets stuck, then it has to borrow movement from the scapula. So imagine I go into that position, but my thoracic spine doesn't let me, so I get stuck there, I then have to borrow movement from the scapula, which then borrows movement from the, the shoulder itself, and so on and so on. So this is how we tend to get an overuse injury. When one joint gets locked, it then borrows movement from others. So when we're looking at shoulder injuries, it's worth looking at the thoracic spine, which would, would sit further uh, along. Now, around the joint, we have a, a capsule. And when this capsule gets sticky, because of how we're treating our shoulder, it restricts movement. We often think, oh, I need to stretch muscles in, it, in order to improve movement. But it's actually the, the capsule and how the joint moves in relationship to the scapula and the thoracic spine that needs to be addressed, first of all, not the muscles. And we need to appreciate that the muscles are dumb. They get, they get instructed by the nervous system and the, through the fascia in how to move. And that's what we need to uh, address. So when we address this, we look at the capsule, the movement, and then by default, things will have a knock-on effect from that. So in part two, what we tend to look at is how to develop these awesome shoulders. So we'll talk about the hang. So hanging from a bar and how it opens up the joint capsule itself and improves grip strength and added bonus. We look at 3D shoulders, uh, which I have borrowed from the Gray Institute. So Gary Gray, um, the, the, the godfather of function, um, looks at mobility and stability through three planes of movement. We'll look at that. Uh, foam roller mobilizations for the thoracic spine, so how to mobilize the thoracic spine. And we look at a couple of different uh, 
and mobilization exercises, the tabletop position in yoga, as well as downward facing dog. They're quite good at opening up the shoulder girdle itself, as well as the capsule and the scorpion reach, which is from animal flow. For those of you who are familiar with animal flow, where we extend through the hips and reach over. These are fantastic movements that open up the anterior and the posterior capsule. And you may be thinking, why is this even relevant? Because if I do excessive bench press, I'm normally pinned on a bench, scapula are fixed in place, which then means I have to borrow movement from the shoulder itself. Funny enough, people do get shoulder injuries when they excessively load through the bench press. The same is true in a bent over row. If I'm really thrashing that weight out, I'm then tightening or making that capsule sticky in the posterior side. So if I then want to do any over, over arm movements where I'm reaching above my head, it can become quite sticky and quite painful. So it's important that we look after our shoulders because they are extremely unstable. And if we look after our shoulders, then generally speaking, we won't have any issues with that area and we can just move on and lift the things that we want to lift without doing excessive amounts of doing band work in the gym like this, which in essence, you're pre-fatiguing your stability muscles, the rotator cuffs, and then asking them to stabilize the humerus against the shoulder girdle in a really heavy load. You may find that this isn't the best answer, and a lot of people do this purely because they've seen other people do it without really understanding what actually goes in and on in that area. There are easier ways of doing it. What I've outlined here are easy ways of smashing this in the gym, allowing you to do this as part of a warm up or part of a separate session. So please come back for part two and I'll show you this in a gym scenario. Thank you, my name's been Kieran of One Zen Academy. Have a good evening.